Well, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to a uh, another episode of uh, our uh, apologetic series on Syria International. I am your host Al Fadi, and uh, we are going to start a brand new series dealing with various Islamic apologetics, including things related even to some of the scientific miracles of the Quran, as well as many of the other traditional. Uh, uh, arguments that our Muslim friends usually bring to the table. Some of those arguments uh, could be good arguments worthy of responding to, but some are even very silly. But the good news here is that I'm going to be joined with a dear brother, Dr. David Wood, who is going to um, give us his perspective on some of these common arguments that he himself deal with and also I myself will be interacting with him as well as a former Muslim who grew up believing in these kind of arguments. But of course, by the grace of God, I finally realized that the truth is in the word of God, the Bible, and that everything I learned as a Muslim had no foundation whatsoever to stand on. Dr. David, thank you for uh, your willingness to join us and welcome to the I'm show. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's really amazing the situation we have with, with Muslim arguments because there are, only, there are only a handful of religions out there that say, here's how you can know that this religion is true, right? Uh, atheists lots of times say, oh, you know, there's so many religions, how do you know that that, that one is, is the truth? How do you know that, that Christianity is the truth or Islam is the truth or something like that? There's so many different religions out there. Um, and while there are a lot of different religions out there, there are only a handful that actually say, here's how you can know that this is true. Uh, Christianity is one of them. Christianity right. says that, that Jesus rose from the dead and that we can know factually that he rose from the dead and there's, therefore we should believe in him. Uh, Islam offers a variety of arguments for how we can know that Islam is true. Mormonism uh, claims that you can know that, it's, that, that Mormonism is true. Uh, but there aren't many more than those. Other, other than those, it's usually, hey, you know, join this religion if you want to, but we're not going to give you any real reason to think that this is the truth. Um, and what, what's amazing is that it, Muslims out there are, are giving arguments, saying, Here, here's how we know that Islam is true. Here's how we know that Muhammad was a prophet. Here's how we know that the Quran is the word of God. And as soon as we start responding, other people start saying, why are you criticizing Islam? Why are you criticizing Muhammad? Why are you criticizing the Quran? And that's just amazing. I mean, when you put an argument out there and say, here's my argument, um, here's my argument to show that my belief is true, you're, you're opening the door for criticism, right? I mean, if, if you're Absolutely. saying, yeah. And unusually, I mean, uh, Muslims actually open the door for responding back as well. If you make an argument, then you're allowing me basically to correspond with you and present my side of the uh, story about that particular argument. Now, we understand there's always two sides to everything. However, facts have to be supported. Truth needs to be built upon a source or resources. When it comes to Islam, as you know, it's, uh, in, in my view, it's always emotional argument more so than factual argument. Has that been your experience? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I find that when, when I'm first interacting with Muslims that they'll try to be based in fact, right? So they'll say, we know that Islam is true because the Quran has been perfectly preserved or because of the scientific miracles in the Quran or because Muhammad was such a wonderful person or because the Bible predicts the coming of Muhammad. They'll, they'll say things like that. But as soon as you start responding, wait a minute, you just said Muhammad is uh, the greatest man who's ever lived. You just said that the Quran is perfectly preserved. Uh, why don't we start looking into these? And then once you start giving them the facts and the evidence, then it, it becomes a, a very emotional issue. How dare you criticize the Quran? How dare you criticize right. Muhammad? Right, right. And, and that's really the sad thing is uh, examples, for instance, when they say, and as I grew up believing, uh, the Quran is perfect. Uh, it's uh, complete. It's the exact Quran that existed at the time of the Prophet. Now, let me ask, how many Muslims know that the Quran we have in our hand today is known as the Cairo Quran, the 1924 edition? Hmm. Probably, not a whole lot of Muslims understand the significance of that. In other words, it was finally canonized in 1924. Why? We know for a fact that we have multiple manuscripts of the Quran that are missing portions of the Quran, and nobody knows who has the missing parts. How did we arrive to the missing parts? In other words, by memory? Well, it took 
hundreds of years until that part was completed. So these are the kind of silly arguments sometimes mm -hmm. that you have to deal with. And w one of the things, one of the things that, that I think lots of people forget, because w when we start responding to Muslim arguments, it's not just Muslims who will get upset if we start criticizing the Quran, even just by giving factual information about it. Uh, lots of people in Western culture uh, are upset if you start uh, criticizing anyone's religious beliefs that don't happen right. to be Christianity. Christianity, is, it's okay to criticize Christianity. Absolutely. Anything else, you must be some sort of bigot. But uh, I really think that, that those are the, the, the Westerners who don't want us criticizing Islam, who put Islam in this special category that you can't criticize it, I think those, those are the people who are really, at the end of the day, it seems like they're insulting Muslims, right? It, it, it's it's like true. they're saying Muslims aren't interested in truth. Uh, they're not capable of dealing with criticism. And reasoning or, with it. Yeah, they're not capable of reasoning exactly. over these, thing, th these things. Therefore, you're evil for trying to get them to reason about these things and trying to get them to defend their arguments or, or, or abandon their arguments. And that assumes that, that Muslims aren't that there are no Muslims who are really interested in, in the truth, and, and that's false. There are Muslims out there who grow up, you're one of them, who grow up believing in Islam because they've been told all their lives that this is true and this is where the evidence lies, but once they, once they see that those arguments aren't very good, they will go wherever the evidence points. And so if you're saying don't ever give them that evidence, don't ever give them, give them their reasons uh, to, to realize that what they've been taught all their lives is false, then you, it, it's almost like you're saying, look, Muslims have been told lies all their lives about the Quran, about That's Muhammad, right. but don't give them the truth. Let them stay that way. Let them stay in a state of deception. And what, I mean, how much more contempt could you have for a group of people to say, right. don't give these people the truth? And it's sad because, especially when it comes from Christians who are commanded to share the truth and share it in love, we understand, of course, that that's the mode that we have to always follow, but we still have to share the truth. Even our Lord told the Pharisees, search the books. I mean, these are the Pharisees, the religious authorities, and Jesus says, you're not reading the Bible correctly. Why don't you go and search it to see that it testifies about me? If he's telling the religious authorities this, how much so we need to tell the normal Muslim who is really relying on these hypocrite religious authorities that tell him you should think this way and act this way, and yet they're the one who is banking basically on account of these basically innocent people sometimes that they just want to do whatever it takes to please the God of Islam. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. When I was searching for the truth, my intent initially was to convert people to Islam, but the more I heard pushback on my silly arguments, I began to realize that there is something missing here. Why was I told this, but I cannot back it up with facts anymore? Why are they telling me this and they can back it up? And that led, of course, into my journey towards finding Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, can you, let's give the audience a, a glimpse of what we are going to cover, uh, hopefully, during this series. Well, uh, you, you can divide these up a, a couple of different ways. Um, you can divide them into Quranic arguments and non-Quranic arguments. And what I mean there is arguments that were actually found in the Quran. So the Quran itself offers arguments for how that we can how we can know that Islam is true. So for instance, uh, the the what we'll call the argument from literary excellence that, mm -hmm. that the Quran is such a literary masterpiece that it that it can't be uh, no one can write anything like it that it must be the word of God. And that's that's the main argument the Quran gives for how we can know Correct. that Islam is true. Well, if that's the main argument for why we should believe that Islam is true, and that's that's being presented to us for our consideration, obviously we should we should think about it and respond to it and decide whether that's a good good argument or not. Um, there's what what we might call the argument from biblical prophecy, that the Quran says that we can go to the Bible to find prophecies about Muhammad. So the, the Quran is saying, if you want to know that Muhammad is a prophet, go to the Bible. The Bible talks about Muhammad. So there are arguments like that that come from the Quran itself. The Quran is saying, Correct. this is how you can know that it's true. Correct. And then we have other arguments that are arguments that Muslims use that, that, aren't, that aren't really found in the Quran, but Muslims use them. They're very popular arguments like, uh, Islam is the fastest growing religion, so right. uh, it must be true. It must be blessed by, by God. Um, uh, the Quran is full of scientific miracles, so th that's based on the Quran, but they're, they're making a sort of modern scientific argument for the truth of, of Islam. So we have, th these are the kinds of arguments that we have, and lots of times there are lots of different versions. So even with an argument like you find Muhammad in the Bible, all Muslims will go to different passages of the Bible to show that Muhammad was a prophet, and unfortunately, 
over the 14th century since Islam started, Muslims have their favorite and best passages that they use to show that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. So we can actually look at those and say, okay, is this really talking about Muhammad? But all of this is being put forward uh, for our consideration. And so, I mean, obviously, if we really, really love Muslims, we would want to Absolutely. get involved in this kind of dialogue. And, and this, even for practical purposes, right? It's much better if Muslims are trying to show that their religion is true by uh, discussions and dialogues and debates than by blowing things up. So, I mean, it really, it's, it's great if we can get involved, if we can get the, the Muslim community involved uh, in these kinds of discussions rather than, rather than the emotional reactions which can, which can lead to, uh, to other things. And just from my, my personal experience, for, for Christians who are wondering, uh, well, why don't you just preach the gospel? Why do you have to criticize Muslim arguments? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got involved in this sort of, this sort of uh, in examinations of, of Muslim sources because my best friend in college was a Muslim. And he gave me all sorts of arguments. He showed me, he tried to show that Islam is uh, proven true by science and all these other things. And it was, it was over, I guess, about four years or so um, that we went through the arguments for Christianity, the arguments for Islam. He eventually abandoned Islam. And he told me after he became a Christian that in the beginning, when, when we were just discussing Christianity, uh, when we were just discussing the deity of Christ and Jesus' death by crucifixion and his resurrection from the dead and the reliability of the New Testament, he said, when we were discussing those things, he understood in my mind that we had good evidence. In other right. words, even as a Muslim, he was looking at this, he's looking at the case because he's actually paying attention and he's, he's very intelligent. He's looking at the arguments and the reason and the evidence and he's saying, these guys have good evidence. But he said, at the same time he was thinking, but I have even better evidence that Islam is true. And he thought to himself, even if David shows me with 99% certainty that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, that he is Lord, I'm still 100% sure that Islam is true because of all the evidence I have for Islam. Right. And so it wasn't until we actually went through those arguments for Islam that he realized, whoa, these arguments that I've been given all my life are yeah. actually very bad arguments. And so it's, it's, it's after, that's what got him thinking uh, and in a position where he's, he's able to take the, the, the gospel more seriously because he doesn't have that complete confidence that he, that he thought he had. And so it, th I've seen this over and over. Yes, I, there are Muslims out there who just hear the gospel and they leave Islam and, and, and they become Christians. But most of the former Muslims I know uh, are, are former Muslim, only started considering the gospel because they saw reasons to doubt Islam. And so it's sure. very important to actually go through their arguments, show that their arguments are false, because we're looking for this sort of light bulb moment where a Muslim realizes, wait a minute, my imam told me all my life that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. Here, David and Al are putting the Muslim sources right in front of me, showing that the Quran has not been perfectly preserved. I know my leader has read these sources. Exactly. Why is exactly. he telling me the opposite of what these sources say? Maybe I can't just mindlessly trust what my leaders say now. Maybe I have to look into this for myself. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want Muslims looking into this for themselves, studying for themselves, because that's, that's when they're on the path to truth. And that's exactly what I wanted to mention is that we do not just use emotional argument. We use resources to back up what we're saying. But most importantly, we use Islamic resources because we don't want the Muslim to think we're fabricating uh, these arguments. And we would like them to go and in invest and in uh, basically their own resources that are available for them in both Arabic and sometimes even in English. Sadly, of course, some of these resources are only in Arabic. And as you know, not all Muslims actually speak Arabic. So they have to rely really on what they're being told. And just to uh, uh, piggyback on what you just mentioned about your friend, can you mention his name? Yeah, Nabil Qureshi. We're talking about a dear brother, Nabil Qureshi, who became one of the probably a world evangelist today. Why? Because our dear brother, Dr. David Wood, took the time to share the truth with him. Now, I'm sure you weren't accept, expecting him to become a follower of Christ, but you were surprised to find out later that he was really processing everything that you were sharing with him. Only God changes the heart. And that's really our intent at the end of the day. We're not here to knock down Muslims. I actually, I would say this, my argument is with Islam, not with the Muslim people, because I feel sympath uh, sympathetic to them because they are victims of this ideology. They're imprisoned in this false reality, thinking that 
This has to be the truth. Why? Because I was told it is the truth. Not that because I processed the evidence and finally I am convinced that it's the truth. So that's our hope. And uh, I would like to invite all of you to join us in this series as we begin to uh, unpack and unfold all of those evidence against many of these arguments. Some of them, like I said, will be valid arguments. Other will be the most silly argument you'll ever come across. And um, one other thing, uh, Dr. Wood, how can people get a hold of you? Where they uh, can they go to watch some of your teachings and so on and so forth? Of course, they know they can come to my site, zerointernational.com, which we will also have a link to our dear brother here. Uh, well, the quickest way to find me would be to go on YouTube and type in David Wood, and that, that'll they'll get to my page, Act 17 Apologetics. Uh, or they can go to act17.net. Uh, it's my general website. And specifically for material dealing with Islam, um, answeringmuslims.org uh, or .com, either one. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward really to uh, unpacking all of these arguments uh, in the coming uh, uh, days and months, hopefully. All right. Blessings to you, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, once again, you can always watch uh, not only this particular uh, series, but all the previous series on our website, syrainternational.com, and also our YouTube channel, Syria International. Until we meet again, have a blessed day.